by transcription. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective, brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Detective Agency. Me, sweetheart. Sam, where have you been? I've uh, been tasting the bitter with the sweet at Miss Wigginson's school for girls. Sort of a uh, special course in homicidal apiculture. Apiculture? Mm Mm-hmm. There were apes involved? Effie, where is your Latin? Apis, apianus, of or pertaining to bees. Oh, bees, of course. It it was a bee caper? It was a beekeeper caper. Oh, that's funny, Sam. That's a honey. Effie, put these words down in your little book. Honey, sweetness, hives, combs, etc. Never mention them again. What? Keep things humming, sweetheart, and I'll be right down to drone my way through my report on the queen bee caper. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. You know, during the summer, when you spend so much of your time out of doors, it's important to pay special attention to the care of your hair. To keep it right in place, to help keep it from getting dry, use America's favorite hair tonic, Wild Root Cream Oil. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. Use it every day. If you've never tried it, ask for it in the 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle, and ask for it by name. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. To be or not to be? Hum. Oh, hello, Sam. Hiya, Sam. How's tricks? Oh, Effie, really, this jargon, this patois. Don't you think it's about time we spoke like educated people? You know best, Sam. Every time I visit one of our institutions of learning, I find out something I didn't know. Oh, Sam, that's incredulous. Well, you just know everything. Yeah, I guess I do when you come right down to it. The bee, for instance. Bees are a genus of insects of the Hymenopterus order. The what? Hymenopterus. Living in society is composed of one queen, or perfect female, <laughs> a few males, or drones, and an indefinite number of undeveloped females, or neuters, which are the workers. That's me, I suppose. A neuter. Well, that's for you to say. Of course. And you know what else about the bee? What, Sam? Confidentially, it stings. <clears throat> Date, uh, July 10th, 1949... To Miss Elizabeth Cowley, Miss Wigginson School for Girls, Seacliff Drive, San Francisco. I wonder about girls sometimes. And that's bad, Effie. Bad. Oh. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the Queen Bee Caper, dear Miss Cowley. I uh, was singing a medley of sorority drinking songs as I opened the wrought iron gate, walked up the garden path past those cast iron deer and presented myself at the big brass bell pull beside that massive panel door that stands guard between the outside world and your sheltered inmates. A little housemaid wearing dimity let me in and led me to your office. I sat on your chintz-covered sofa and looked at your drapes with their thriving beehive motif and waited for you with my back half-turned to the open door. <laughs> yeah, hello, how are you? seen a man before? Run along now. You'll be late for physical ed. Go on. Quick. Miss Cowley? No, I'm not Miss Cowley. Oh, no, of course not. No, I was just hoping. You're Mr. Spade, aren't you? Laurie Thomas. I'm Miss Cowley's assistant. 
A nice day, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, don't bother to move. I'll lean over you. Mm -hmm. Put this report on her desk. Mm, sure. Miss Collie will be here in just a minute. Oh, thanks. It's so warm in here. Next time, wear a mailman's uniform and a 50-year-old stoop. You'll find the temperature's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, yes, ma'am. See that you do, then. Oh, Glory. There seems to have been a misplacement of some of the hockey. Would you check on it, please? Oh, surely. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Bay. <clears throat> I'm Elizabeth Cowley. You may sit down. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Spade, I'll be painfully frank with you. A thief is at large in my school. Oh? Well, uh, you probably have a good answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Why not call in the police? I have a good answer, Mr. Spade. My girls come from San Francisco's finest and wealthiest families. Mm -hmm. Miss Wigginson's has had an untarnished reputation for more than three generations. I'm sure. As headmistress, I must handle this matter with the utmost discretion. Frankly, I already know the thief. Are there any questions? Well, uh, only one timid one. Who is it? I regret to say a faculty member is to blame. Glory Thomas. She was in here a minute or two ago. Oh, really? Well, uh, why, Miss Thomas, you find any of the loot stashed away in her room? Well, no. Uh, no, not exactly. I haven't recovered any of the stolen articles, but I'm sure Glory's responsible. I'm certain she's the thief. You're just sure? I, I thought perhaps you might establish definite proof against Glory. You mean you, you want me to frame her? Oh, no, Mr. Spade. I, you misunderstand me. I don't think so, Miss Collie. Oh, dear. I, I was afraid this would happen. I told Ursula. But then I... All right, I'll ask. Who's Ursula? Mr. Spade, I... I think I can trust you. It was Ursula who instructed me to call you. Ursula Cavanaugh. You know the name. The Ursula Cavanaugh inherited all the real estate, lives in Cavanaugh Towers penthouse, hasn't set foot out of there in 20 years? Yes. Mrs. Cavanaugh is our school's benefactress. She is, of course, on the board of trustees. She is, moreover, a dear personal friend. Oh, I see. Oh, yes. We were classmates together here many years ago. Ursula's quite unlike myself. Married well, though a widow now. Rather aggressive. Frankly, she wishes to have... Glory Thomas discharged, but her connection with the dismissal must not be known. Now, I don't suppose I can ask you to take the assignment now. I'm a detective, Miss Colley, not a frame-up artist. I had to have my name called up in the lobby, and then two elevator trips later, I faced her on her penthouse terrace. Ursula Cavanaugh looked like a 1910 stock company lead out of Charlie's Ant. Smoking a black Italian stogie and gripping a cane like a shillelagh. Two men were on the receiving end of her black snake whip of the tongue. A youngish guy, stockbroker type, and an individual in a morning coat who looked practically nude without a butterfly net. Oh, you're a fool and an nincompoop, Jelinek. I lost all patience with you ages ago. Not only are you incompetent, but you're also dishonest. Don't mind telling you that when the board of directors meets on Thursday, I intend to instruct well, uh, them. Really, to have... Miss Cavanaugh, I, I've tried not to uh, discommode you in any way. Uh, I endeavor in every detail to fulfill my responsibilities as manager of this hotel. Don't interrupt me. Uh, Auntie, I think you've got Jelinek and me all wrong. Now, the truth the is... The truth is, we... Gerald, you're both a pair of thieving scoundrels. Now, get out, Jelinek, before your weasel face ruins my digestion. Very well, madam. I remain at your service. Ah, no back. Oh, no stunk. And as for you, my dear nephew... Uh, I think I'll toddle along, Addie. I ought to get back to the office. Control your little impulses, Gerald. I admire a little larceny in any man, but not at my expense. I was beginning to think I'd become invisible in that rarefied penthouse atmosphere. She hadn't even blinked at me while Jelinek slunk back to the lobby and Gerald toddled along to his office. The terrace was a riot of bloom. I don't know much about flowers, but she must have had them all there. Off to one side, a little man in a blue smock putted around a wooden structure on a stand. I'd become aware of bees humming amidst the flowers when she finally spoke to me. You're Tom Spade, aren't you? Sam, ma'am, the fun-loving Spade. Picked your photograph out of the other detectives. Looked like you got spunk. Why'd you come here? Curiosity. I met Glory Thomas out at Miss Wigginson's. I liked her. I wanted to see the type that would strong arm her out of a job from a safe distance. Spunky. Come over here, Mr. Spade. I want to show you something. Picture 
take it. Yes, ma'am. That'll do for now. Work at the other end of the garden for the time being. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Piggott's my gardener and beekeeper. Most taciturn individual. You know what this is? Well, I didn't, but now I can see it's a beehive. Yes, my own beehive. Fresh honey from a tea and fruitcake every afternoon. Fine old tradition. Observe this hive, young man. Honeybees are the most intelligent of all insects, surpassing even the ants. And why? <laughs> because one female controls a community of many, many thousands. I am against it. Yes, Mr. Spade. The queen bee reigns supreme. The males are droves, quite useless. The female workers perform all necessary labor, no waste motion, no dissension. Well, some of my best friends are drones, and I just can't I stand them. I think alone. you understand me, Mr. Spade. I wish Gloria Thomas removed from San Francisco for an excellent reason. My nephew, Gerald Long, the young man who just left here, has developed absurd romantic notions about her. Yeah, so you want the romance busted up. But if you try to break it up openly, your nephew might get stubborn and even marry her. On the other hand, by framing her as a thief, you ward off the affair until you can figure out some other dirty trick. I knew you'd understand me, Mr. Spade. I admire bluntness in moderation. Well, what do you say to joining forces with me? Just one thing, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Nuts. <laughs> Next morning, I put through a call to Nickinson School for Girls. It had been my intent to talk to you, Miss Collie, to tell you I'd left my hat in your office, but somehow I found myself talking to Glory Thomas. And somehow our talk resulted in a cocktail date at the 10 o'clock Scholar Bar and Lounge. I shouldn't have come, of course. Oh, uh, exam papers to grade, no doubt? Stacks and stacks. Hmm, soft, velvet-type hands. Well, what's this on them? Stain. I teach our girls chemistry, among other things. Mm-hmm. How about me taking on a night school class for the other things? You're crazy. You don't need any education. Well, I can always use a postgraduate course. <laughs> You're really crazy, Sam. I needed this. We'll make a night of it. Maybe. Gerald won't object, huh? What's that mean? Who have you been talking to? That hateful old woman? Mrs. Cavanaugh wants to put the boots to you, Glory. She called me in to frame you. I could kill her. Oh, easy now, Gloria. Don't talk to me. I thought I could take it. I thought I could be patient and wait while Jerry ironed everything out. But not now, though. I hate that selfish, domineering old woman. I hate her nephew, and I hate you. Well, that'll do to start with, honey. Now let's get down my list. I hate... Don't the... let me go. I've had all I can take for one night. Wait a minute, Gloria. I was... Hey, you forgot your bag. Hey! She disappeared around the corner as I came out into the street. It was starting to rain. As I stepped off the curb, I slipped and turned my ankle. As I limped onto Montgomery Street, I saw her disappearing into one of the tall buildings on my side of the street. It could have been the Cavanaugh Towers. I stepped and a half into the lobby thereof a few minutes later. As I came in, Jelinek, the manager, was getting off the elevator. He swatted himself several times in the neck and then went into a door marked private. No trace of glory in the lobby. I looked in the bar. She wasn't there, but Albert Piggott, the beekeeper, was having a stinger. Who? Now I'm beginning to feel good. I feel... Hey, who's this? I know that. Why, it's Mr. Spade. Sit down, Mr. Spade. I don't have Spade. time just now, Mr. Piggott. Tell well, me... Sit down, you... sit down, oh, sit down. Oh, oh, easy, easy. I'm, easy. I'm fired. Have you heard? I'm fired. Just a worker out of work. Turned out by the Queen Bee. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Piggott. I imagine Mrs. Cavanaugh wasn't too easy to work for. I told her to keep away from the bees when I wasn't there. Well, she's gone and disobeyed me. One of the workers must have stung her. She's got a temper, you know. Ooh, my. Must have smashed the eye with her stick. Bees were everywhere, all over. And then she fired me. When was this, and why did she fire you? Oh, about, oh, just... Now, maybe half an hour ago, I knocked, and then there wasn't any answer, and then I let myself in. It was all dark. I couldn't even see her. Heard the bees, of course, but couldn't. <gasps> Who was I? And I said, Mrs. Cavanaugh, you, you disobeyed me. And in this voice, this awful voice, she said, Mr. Pickett, you're fired. Get out. This awful voice in the dark. And Mr. Mr. Pickett, mind you, never before, just Pickett this and Pickett that. And they, hey, where are you going? Hey! I didn't bother to stop at the desk to get myself announced. I took the passenger elevator and then operated the penthouse elevator myself. No hands. Nobody answered my ring. 
The door was unlocked. I was inside. Crossed through the empty apartment to the terrace. The rain had just stopped, and the sunset cut a sudden shaft. First, I heard it. The humming of swarming bees. Then I saw the overturned beehive. Then I saw Ursula Cavanaugh sprawled back in her chair, her stick and Italian stogie on the floor, while the bees clustered greedily over the fruit cake and honey set out on the table. I wondered if those most intelligent of all insects had the answer to Shakespeare's question, Oh, death, where is thy sting? The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead, socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the generous new 25-cent size of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic, on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too, and mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again... The choice of men and women and children, too. And now, back to the Queen Bee Caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. Sam Spade. Oh, oh, yes. You shouldn't have gone to see Mrs. Cavanaugh. I didn't make any promises, ma'am. Ursula was quite upset by your visit. Called me after you left her. Quite angry about it, Mr. Spade. Oh? She wanted to see me today. Our weekly half-day holiday, you know. But I simply couldn't face her. I'm sorry if I sound I finally managed to doze off after everyone left for the afternoon. Have you called before? No, this is the first time. I'm at Mrs. Cavanaugh's place right now. Indeed. Does Ursula wish to talk to me? She can't. I beg your pardon? It might be a good idea if you'd come over here, Miss Colley. Mrs. Cavanaugh's dead. What was that? Mrs. Cavanaugh's dead. And since you're her oldest and closest friend... Yes, Mrs. Spade. I'll come immediately. <laughs> Well, you came on over, Miss Colley, but meanwhile, nephew Gerald Long arrived, also Piggott, whom I called down at the bar and who sobered up with remarkable rapidity on hearing the news. Gerald was shaken up by his great aunt's demise. We waited for the family doctor to arrive and watched Piggott entice the bees back into the hive. You turned up soon after and tried to soothe Gerald's nerves. The hotel manager, Jelinek, also flooded in. The doctor diagnosed cause of death as shock from formic acid. The secretion bees inject into the bloodstream with their stingers. We all stood around thinking our various thoughts as the doc voiced this verdict. Piggott was the one who voiced an epitaph. She really knew nothing about bees, you know. The queen bee was all important, she thought. But there's always a rebel in every hive. The queen bee is always deposed sooner or later. The worker bees go on and on. But the queen bee... Can't rain forever. After that, we all left and went our various ways. Poor old Piggott shouldn't have said that. And he must have been a lot drunker than he seemed. Because he was found next morning in his garden in Marin County beside his overturned beehive, a victim like his late employer of fatal bee stings. Well, Nick, you're a fool if you think you can 
think you'll get away with this. Don't threaten me, Mr. Long. I've been bullied long enough. I don't intend to lose my position here now Mrs. Kavanaugh's gone. I've taken all I could stand from her, and I don't intend to let you walk all over me. I'll do whatever I think needs to be done, Jelinek. Well, if you're trying to insinuate I that I have I can cause you as much trouble as you cause me. Maybe more. With what I found out about you now, Get out I here. Can... Go on, beat it before I break... How did you get in here, Spade? The door was open. Well, if you're here to collect any kind of bill, I want to know what services you rendered. Nothing's rendered yet. But I figured you might like to know that Aunt Ursula was murdered. Murdered? Uh, you, 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 you can't say that. Not my whole Shut up, Jelinek. You need proof to back that up, Spade. I've got it. Piggott. What? Piggott's dead. How do you know? His doctor just called me. Yeah. Well, that's why I know your aunt was murdered. I've just been out to Marin. I had quite a session with that doctor. Well, where's your proof, man? Who'd want to kill her? Well, I... Oh, stop it. Practically everybody will know her. Uh, really, now, I, I must protest this disrespect to the Shut members up. of the... Shut up. Go on, Spade, go on. Start getting specific. Well, specifically, Piggott's doctor, because of what I suggested, examined the dead man again, found the mark of a hypodermic, plus the fact that a concentrated solution of formic acid killed Piggott. Piggott's next-door neighbor said he'd been stung as often as 10 and 12 times a day. That meant he'd built up a certain immunization to bee sting. Are you suggesting that someone murdered him with an injection of uh, commercial formic acid? I thought I'd made that fairly clear. And what would the motive be? To keep him from talking about his employer's murder. I see. Well, is that all? Yeah, except that his neighbor told me somebody answering your description called on him this afternoon. Mike. My... Oh. Well, yes, but uh, Spade, look here. I can explain Allow that. Allow me. I... Hello. Jill, hello, darling. I'll be through in about an hour. Just got to check supplies in the chem lab, and then I'll be home and show you what a cook I am. You better be pretty I'm honest. sorry. Just a second. Here's Gerald. For you, Gerald. Your wife. Oh. I... Hold on a second, honey. Uh, Spade, look here. Now, you, you can't drag her into this thing. When did you get married? She... Yesterday afternoon. Husband and wife. No testifying, huh? <laughs> well, I don't think I'll need your testimony. Jelinek's face fell four inches into his ascot tie as he heard himself lose exclusive hush money rights to the above information. Pausing only to enjoy a hearty laugh at his discomfiture, I went on to my next and final port of call, Miss Wigginson's School for Girls. This time, there was no girlish tittering as I entered Miss Collie. No dewy young Amazons clutching hockey sticks in their grubby little hands. For a very good reason, as you told me. My girls are dismissed for the day, Mr. Spade. Because of poor Ursula, of course. Really disrupts our routine. First our weekly half-day holiday yesterday and now today. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Miss Thomas in the uh, chemistry lab she is, I think. Very well. I'll take you to her. She knows nothing of our first meeting. I've talked to her. Oh, well, in here. Yes? Oh, what do you want? Thought we might talk. There's nothing to talk about. Well, we could talk about this hypodermic needle. Put that down. I'm using it for an experiment. Or uh, how about a formula, HCOH or CH202? What? That's formic acid. Mm Mm-hmm. Miss Collie, you said yesterday was a half-day holiday. Did Miss Thomas stay here in school? Why, no. She rarely does on Wednesday afternoon. That's why Mrs. Cavanaugh had a visitor, didn't she, Glory? Did she? After you ran away from me. All right. I I did go up to see her. I... I was so mad about about what you told me. I intended to hand in my resignation and give her a piece of my mind, and I... I, But she was dead when I got there. Oh, Glory, no. And I I just got panic-stricken and ran. Yeah, murder's a pretty scary thing. Murder? What do you mean, Mr. Spade? Mrs. Kavanaugh died from a hypodose of formic acid. Somebody familiar with chemistry would use that method. Then... Then that could mean... Mm -hmm. The acid could be made up in this lab. The hypodermic could be this one here. I didn't kill her. I didn't. You say you were scared. You were so scared, you ran all the way to City Hall and married her nephew. So you found out. Uh, Jellyneck found out first. He intended to squeal the old lady, but she was dead when he got back. He knew her will disinherited Gerald if he married without her auntie's approval while she was still alive. We married after she was dead. But, But that didn't matter. After I saw you, I told Jerry if he was any sort of man, he'd marry me, will or no will. 
did. And yet this morning he drove over to Marin County to see old Piggott. You think he was trying to shield me? I tell you, she was dead when I got into that room. I don't know anything about Piggott. One moment. I believe I recall that Mr. Piggott said Ursula spoke to him when she uh, discharged him. Glory, you must be mistaken about the time you entered that room. She couldn't have already been dead because... Yes, uh, she could have and was. The killer was almost caught by Piggott. She hid behind the curtain in the dark and spoke to him. Miss Cavanaugh was already dead, but... Uh... I see. Mr. Piggott thought it was Ursula's voice, but it was yours, Glory. No, it was yours, Miss Colley. What? You committed both murders. You had access to the murder weapon. You had the half-day holiday to do it in. Mr. Spader. Even at that moment, the finishing school schoolmarm had to say, Mr. Piggott. Well, I'm not sorry for it. Ursula misused her power shamefully. And now the queen bees deposed again. Oh, you're brighter than most men, Mr. Spade. You, too, understood the significance of Mr. Piggott's remark last night. Yeah, I could have been a little brighter a little sooner. You helped give yourself away when you asked me if I'd called you earlier yesterday afternoon. But why, Sam? How could she? Well, Kavanaugh bullied her since childhood. Then you came on the staff and your ability scared her. Oh. Queen Bee being deposed and whatnot. When Kavanaugh wanted you framed, she saw a chance to get rid of both of you. She hoped her murder would look like an accident, but if it was recognized as murder, you'd be the logical suspect. Oh, you're much too clever, Mr. Spade. Let's get it over with. Yeah, let's. It's up to those drones at Homicide from here on in. Period and a report. Sam. Yes, Evie? How come Gerald went out to see Mr. Piggott? Well, Gerald didn't care about the will, but he didn't want to boot a fortune out the window either. Glory hadn't told him she'd seen his aunt, so he called on Piggott to find out when Piggott last saw Auntie alive. Go type that up. I am completely well, and when you return, we shall Indian wrestle. Certainly, Sam. And now, listen to this. Shopping notes. Tonight or tomorrow, get a family-sized bottle or handy tube of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's favorite hair tonic. 